Hello there. You thought I wasn't coming back. You probably thought the podcast was not going to get another episode, but you were wrong. <laughs> I am back. I'm in Ireland right now. I would give you more details about what's been going on, but one listener wrote me and told me that I included too many personal details in the podcast, and he was going to refrain from writing a review until I made the podcast more about words, and didn't put any personal details in the podcast. So, <laughs> I'll try not to bore you too much with those details, but yes, I am in Ireland, and this is episode 40 of the Victor Prep Vocab Podcast. And I am going to review the words from episode 39, if anyone can remember those, <laughs> given that that was about two months ago. So, yeah, here we go. Oratund. Oratund. That's usually referring to a sound, and it means full, round, imposing. It can mean deep, too. Misanthrope. Misanthrope. That is a person who avoids other people. He is a loner, or she is a loner, or hermit. Delight, dislikes other people, maybe goes alone to live in the woods. Opaque. Opaque. That means you can't see through it, like a wall. It means it's not transparent. Opaque can also be used when referring to information, and it can mean information that's hard or impossible to understand, i.e. that essay was very opaque. And our final word was empirical. Empirical. That means based on observation and evidence, rather than just pure theory or logic. So, those were our w words from episode 39. Now, moving on to episode 40. One of the things that did happen in the last few months was my old laptop got destroyed by coffee, and that laptop did have all my list of words on it. So, I did have to create the whole word list again, um, however, I don't have the old order, so I had to just redo a new order, and thus I made the words for episode 40 kind of special, because I thought, it's been a few months without an episode, I'm going to pick four words I really love, and those will blow our <laughs> new episode's words. So, our first word is solipsism. Solipsism. And this is the view, or theory, that the self is all that can be known to exist. Solipsism is spelt S-O-L-I-P, solip, S-I-S-M, sism, solipsism. So yes, this is the philosophical idea that you can only really know that you yourself exist, and that everything else in the world or all the other people could be a dream or they might not exist. So whatever you think about that idea, and most people think that is obviously not the case, that is what solipsism means. And this is this word is mostly used more as an adjective, so solipsistic. So if someone is solipsistic, you could say they are self-centered or selfish, or perhaps they have an extreme preoccupation with their own feelings, their own desires, they're very self-absorbed. So they're acting like they're the only person in the universe, for example. Some synonyms are egoistic, egomaniacal, egotistic, narcissistic, self-absorbed, self-centered, self-infatuated, selfish, self-loving, self-obsessed, and so on. There's a lot of different synonyms. Self-preoccupied, self-serving, you get the picture. This word's origin is in Latin, and it comes from the Latin word solus, meaning alone, and ipsa, meaning self. So those two words together are alone, self, which is quite sad when you think about it and what that word means. So, going on to our second word, and that word is philistine. Philistine. Philistine is spelled P-H-I-L-I-S, Phyllis. T-I-N-E, Tyne, Philistine. A Philistine is a person who is hostile or indifferent to culture and the arts. So this person might be hostile to cultural values, 
Or maybe they're just indifferent. They don't care about art or music or writing or any of these things that most people quite enjoy. There aren't many synonyms for Philistine, but one of them is a Bulgarian. And you could also say someone is lowbrow if they don't like the arts, are not interested, or uh, maybe smugly indifferent. So that means they, they know they don't like the arts and they're quite happy about it. This word has quite an interesting origin. I was curious about it, so I looked it up. And apparently this is a reference to a confrontation between university students and townspeople in 17th century Germany. And someone gave a ser sermon on the conflict and quoted, The Philistines are upon you, which is from the Bible. And so there was an association made between these townspeople and people who were hostile to culture. So I don't know if the Philistines in the Bible were against culture, but I doubt it. But just because of this event in Germany in the 17th century, the word Philistine has been linked with people who are hostile to culture and the arts. Our third word is legidemain. Legidemain. It is spelled L-E-G-E-R, ledger, D-E-M-A-I-N, domain, ledger domain. Ledger domain comes from French, and if you know French, this word is going to be really easy to remember the meaning of, because it translates almost directly. But ledger domain means sleight of hand, or trickery and deception. So, ledger domain comes from the French léger de main, and that means light of hand. Léger, light, de, of, and main, hand. Léger de main. And so, when you think of this word, I want you to think of the image of a pickpocket, maybe some sort of Oliver Twist type Fagin character who's creeping around and using his quick hands and trickery to pickpocket people. That is a bit of Leger de main, or leger de main. So, sleight of hand, trickery, maybe some cunning there as well. This word usually implies some sort of dexterity, perhaps. So, some synonyms are sleight of hand, juggling, magic, illusion, and dexterity. It can also refer to any sort of artful trick. So, if you're watching a magician on stage and he performs something deftly and makes something disappear, you could say that's legitimate. That's some sort of sleight of hand or trickery. And our final word for today is peregrinate. Peregrinate. That's spelled P-E-R-E, -E, para, G-R-I-N-A-T-E, grenate, peregrinate. Peregrinate means to travel or wander from place to place. It can also mean a course of travel or a journey. Some synonyms are trip, excursion, and expedition. So, I love the word peregrinate because it reminds me of one of my favorite birds, which is the peregrine falcon. So, you can imagine a falcon, bird of prey... Is going to do a lot of traveling, a lot of moving about. So if you know the peregrine falcon, you can recognize the word peregrinate. And peregrine falcon and peregrinate obviously come from the same origin, which is the Latin for meaning abroad or foreign, which is peregrine. So yes, quite easy to remember, I think, especially if you've heard of peregrine falcons. Some synonyms are trip, excursion, journey, or expedition. I like peregrinate as well because I often travel or go from place to place, so peregrinate makes me think of me a little bit. <laughs> anyway, so we've done our four words for today. Let's quickly go over them. The first word was solipsism. Solipsism is the view or idea that only the self can be known to exist. And solipsistic, which is the more used adjective form is the quality of being self-centered or selfish, or extremely preoccupied with your own feelings and desires. Philistine, Philistine, that is a person who is hostile or indifferent to culture and the arts. Legidemain, 
ledger domain, that means sleight of hand. It means trickery or deception, or a magician's artful trick. And our final word was peregrinate. Peregrinate. That means to travel or wander from place to place. It can also mean a trip or journey. Now, our test example sentences. Listen to each sentence and think about which word I'm referring to. Jane loved going to the opera, but her husband Jim thought it was silly and told her not to waste her money. Jack Kerouac, the American writer, lived a life of travelling from place to place. His most famous novel was appropriately titled On the Road. Chris didn't make many friends at school, because people quickly realised he only seemed to care about his own needs and feelings, and never bothered helping anyone else. After shaking hands with the orphan street urchin, I realised with astonishment that my watch was missing. So guys, that was episode 40. The test episode is going to come next, and I am back. I am recording more episodes. I have nothing else to do here on business in Cork, Ireland. So yeah, expect more episodes in the coming days. And all those people that have emailed me recently and are awaiting a reply, I will reply. I have been reading your emails. I have been relatively busy. But yeah, no, don't worry. We'll reply. And yeah, I hope you have an amazing Tuesday or Wednesday whenever you hear this. So yeah, <laughs> take it easy, everyone. Bye-bye.